With all of these beautiful feast days of Our Lady in the month of September, there are many of them. The whole month is dedicated to Our Lady of Sorrows, and of course, the feast day was yesterday, and today the Solemnity. On the 8th, we had the Nativity of the Blessed Virgin Mary, and then the Holy Name on the 12th, and Our Lady of Ransom coming up soon on the 24th of this month. I thought I would speak today on devotion to Our Lady. After all, St. Alphonsus says the same thing. Of Mary there can never be enough. Never forget that. Now imagine for a moment what this world would be like without the Blessed Virgin Mary. There would be no redemption. There would be no peace between God and man. We would always remain his enemy at odds with God, our creator. For sin would always remain on the soul and we would have no remedy for it. The gates of paradise would be locked shut forever. For if Mary did not exist, there would not ever have been a Christ, a Messiah, to redeem us. The Blessed Virgin Mary is the instrument chosen by God from all eternity to bring Christ into this world, to give him flesh so that he could bleed, so that he could die on the cross. Imagine if she had said no to becoming God's mother when she was there praying on the day of the Annunciation. And who could imagine what her prayer must have been like? So contemplative, so with such a desire to see the day of the Messiah coming into the world. And the angel appears to her and asks her, will you consent to be the mother of God, to give him a body? so that he can suffer, so that he can die, so that he can purchase the souls of men away from the devils. They say that when Gabriel asked that question to the Blessed Virgin, there was a pause where all of the angels in heaven were looking down, waiting to see what Our Lady would say. And then she says her fiat, let it be done to me according to thy word. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Imagine if she had said no that day. She could have done it. She was as free to say no to that angel as you and I are free to say no to God. When God asks some sacrifice of us or asks us to obey his commandments, we can say no. It is not prudent. It is not good. But we can say no. Mary was just as free to say no to the angel on that day. And then there would have been no redemption. But she willed to bring Christ into the world. And just as she desired to bring him into the world on the Annunciation, so she daily wishes to bring him into our souls on a daily basis. And this is the reason why we show devotion to the Blessed Virgin Mary. Mary is so important in the spiritual life that it can be said, without her it is well nigh impossible to be saved. We say, all the theologians, all of the church fathers, all of the saints tell us the same thing, that devotion to Mary is a sign that God is drawing you to heaven. That, in other words, it is a sign of predestination. Whereas they say, the contrary is also true. Those who despise devotion to the Blessed Virgin Mary It is not a good sign. Mary is that important, for that is how our Lord 
has willed it to have her to be so important in for in our spiritual life and for our salvation now that being said mary is not the source of all graces only our lord is the source the inventor if you will of all graces but our lady is like an aqueduct through whom all the graces must pass. Now imagine the physical body of any person. You've got the head, you've got the neck, and you've got the heart, and you've got the the different members of the body, correct? Yes. You have all of that. And all of your members have different functions. And it is the same in the mystical body of Christ. The church is the mystical body of Christ, with Christ being the head, and they say the the heart is the Holy Ghost, because He is the love of the Father and the Son, and you and I are the members. We all have a part to play in this in the church. Some of us have smaller responsibilities and parts to play, so we might be the pinky finger. Others have a bigger job, and so we're the whole right arm, what have you. But they say that Mary's role in the mystical body is the neck. That is because when you feed a physical body, you consider that to be the grace, food. You put it, it comes from the head. You put it in the mouth, and it goes through the neck in order to nourish the body. That's how it is with the mystical body. All graces come from Christ, the head, but to get to us, to nourish us, they must pass through the neck, which is Our Lady. All the graces that you receive come from God through her. That is why it is so important to go to God through Mary and all of your needs. All this being said, you can tell that it is quite essential to our devo- to our spiritual life to practice a true devotion to Our Lady. Not merely to say prayers to her, but to live this devotion. What is devotion? I've explained it here many times before. Devotion, again, is not just saying a bunch of prayers. Devotion is devotedness. Devotedness means the gift of oneself. You are completely giving yourself over to someone or something else. In this case, devotion to the Blessed Virgin means to give your entire being to the Blessed Virgin Mary. They say that we give her our intellect when we hold her in the most profound reverence. And I'll explain these briefly in a moment. We give her our will when we put an absolute confidence and trust in her intercession. We give her our heart when we show her a tender and childlike love. And in fine, we give her our whole being when we strive as far as possible to imitate her virtues. This veneration that we have towards our mother is founded upon one thing, and that is her dignity as the mother of God. Her veneration is due, rightfully speaking, to the one whom the Word made flesh calls his mother. Veneration is owed to the one whom God has chosen from all the other women who had ever walked the face of the earth to be the mother of his son. Veneration is due to the one whom the Holy Ghost calls his spouse and his sanctuary. And if the angels themselves venerate her, then why not man? Veneration is due to her because she is the mother of God. And when God honors her, we must honor her as well. The second sign of true devotion to Our Lady aside from this profound veneration, is absolute confidence in Our Lady's intercession. This confidence is based on two things. The first is her power. 
Mary 